Kia ora, my Kia ora. name's Gareth. And I'm Roger. And together we're... Roger and Gareth. <laughs> uh, and tonight we're going to be looking at uh, finding those queer bits and bites in online histories. So what, what is all this about, Roger? This is all about finding us, finding ourselves in the past. It's all about looking online to see what we can discover about rainbow history. So the, um, the, the presentation is going to last around about an hour and uh, we'll cover a, a whole range of, of different websites and different uh, places to go looking. And this is really just a, a starting point. Um, hopefully uh, it inspires you to, to go and look for um, a whole variety of uh, rainbow treasures online. Today is a very special day. It's uh, Women's Interna International Day for Women, um, which is uh, really important, and women have played a huge part in rainbow communities. But today is also really special for a number of other reasons. Um, firstly, on the 8th of March, 1985, uh, Fran Wilde introduced a private member's bill into Parliament, and that was to decriminalise homosexual activity in New Zealand and also to um, prevent discrimination against uh, rainbow communities. So a huge tribute to Fran for all her work, uh, which was uh, amazing and, and very much appreciated and has changed our lives uh, for the better. We'd also like to really pay tribute to uh, Georgina Bayer, who uh, passed away a number of days ago and Georgina was an icon of rainbow communities here in Aotearoa but also around the world and uh, this is a wonderful uh, image from I think it's around about 2021 mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Dame Patsy Reddy at uh, Government House and uh, Georgina has been inspirational for a lot of people and uh, will be an inspiration in the future yes, as well. for sure. We'd just like to also um, show this slide. Uh, this is of uh, Bill Logan and Fran Wilde and Alison Laurie, and they were talking about uh, homosexual law reform in the 1980s, and this was uh, taken at Te Papa uh, about 10 years ago, I think. Gosh, 10 years ago. Oh. Um, and uh, Bill and Alison were um, really instrumental activists at the time, and I think this was the moment in proceedings when Fran was talking about the passing of the bill, <laughs> which is really fantastic. But the bill would not have passed without Fran, without the MPs, without uh, people like Bill and Alison and community members. And so we really want to pay mm. tribute uh, to them tonight. And the last tribute we want to pay to is to Wellington Pride Festival. And uh, this was the scene on Saturday uh, at Parliament and we have five rainbow community flags flying here, which is amazing. Uh, whether Fran could ever have imagined in 1985 that these flags would be flying mm. at the seat of Parliament in New Zealand. And uh, the Wellington Pride Festival had done an amazing job to really um, foreground uh, Takatapui Indigenous um, uh, rights and people and um, it's been an amazing festival so far. Mm. So thank you. Uh, we really appreciate being part of the festival. Yes. We do. So tonight's presentation is going to be broken into a number of parts. So we're looking at uh, personal connections, community, the community and as it interfaces with the mainstream, and then another look at the mainstream itself um, state and official sources for historical information and also international sources too. A whole range of different areas. And so we'll go quite fast through this because there is so much to get through. Um, so please feel free to um, come back on this video and have another look and, and uh, get a bit more uh, kind of uh, uh, slow it down a wee bit. Don't put us on um, half speed because we probably sound... <laughs> really bad. Um, but let's have a look at um, how this is going to work. So basically, we've got a, a, a website page on the Pride NZ website. Uh, so if you go to pridenz.com, and if you search on the keyword, if I can, this is live demonstrations for you. Um, if you just search on finding, uh, you'll come up with finding those queer bits and bytes. And 
on this page, we've got a list of all the links that we're going to be clicking through tonight. So um, you can again follow through at a, at a later point in time. So the, the, the first uh, thing that we're going to be talking about is um, those personal connections. And um, we're thinking about kind of people and we're thinking of the people that you know, but we're also thinking about um, sites that uh, that are very easily accessible. For instance, um, on Facebook, there is a Lost Gay Wellington web page. And this is just full of names and places and dates. Um, it's a private group. And as you can see from the description, um, even though it's called Lost Gay Wellington, um, it's about gay, bisexual, transgender, lesbian, intersexed communities. So it's, it's a bit broader than um, the, the, the name suggests. And uh, other cities uh, no doubt have similar uh, pages on Facebook. So if you're not in Wellington or not interested in Wellington history, then there may well be a, a page for uh, the history that you're interested in. Yeah. And uh, another website is uh, Lost Late Night of Wellington. And this is a public page, in fact, so you can actually see uh, some of the media. Um, so there's a, a, a real intersection between um, kind of rainbow communities and mainstream. And so, for instance, if we go down here, you can see lots of really interesting images. And then, of course, we get things like um, Club Exotique, uh, which is a, a, a venue where uh, Georgina Beyer worked. Um, this is on Cuba Street. And so it's great to even see just like a, a little poster uh, for, oh, that, for, for yeah. that. So some of the things we're actually looking for include Things you'd be wanting to find are names, names of people, names of groups, uh, names of organisations. You'll be looking for events. You'll be looking for publications. You'll be looking for dates. When did things happen? Who did what, where and when? Basically, those journalistic principles, who, what, where and when, are the sorts of things that you'll be looking for as a historian looking online. Hmm. So a number of other uh, interesting sites that will help us kind of jump off and and find uh, these these various names and dates include uh, I'm I'm going to promote uh, Pride NZ because Go on, <laughs> um, the the Pride NZ timeline so this has got around about three thousand entries and it's been developed over the years starts right back in uh, 1795 goes right through to 2023 uh, but it has names it has links off to Wikipedia um, it's just a real treasure trove for actually discovering our, our rainbow heritage. And it's being added to all the time. There's a lot of um, sources for this information. There's around about um, 12 um, different kind of uh, websites that are being drawn from in this information. And uh, so that is available, as I say, around about 3,000 um, entries. And, oh, look. And Will Hansen is commenting, saying, you guys are the best. I've relied on the timeline for my research so much, exclamation mark. Oh, thanks, Will. So thank you, Will. Appreciate that. Um, and it's great. We've never used this bit of software in terms of streaming. So we're actually getting comments. <laughs> it works. Live streaming. So yay. 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 It's all working. Thank you, Will. Love you. Um, also, uh, we have the Pride NZ archived websites. So this is very much using the Wayback machine, uh, which is the Internet Archives um, machine. And it allows you to go and look at websites from 10, 20, 30 years ago, which is incredible. Mm. Um, so on the Pride NZ site, there are a, a number of websites. Uh, this is certainly not exhaustive. Um, certainly more to be done in terms of uh, what websites are available. Uh, but you can see here, it's got the earliest, latest dates. You click on those and it will take you to the websites. And this is a really good point. Uh, this is a really good time to um, really um, promote Ellen Fayad's work mm. here in Wellington. Mm. Ellen has been doing lesbian.net.nz for many years. And this is really ex exciting because you can go back in time. And this is a snapshot from 2001. It's amazing. Yeah. And this website, Ellen um, maintains, basically talks about events, people, uh, what's going on in the community. And so you can jump back over 20 years and see what was happening and when it was happening and where it was happening. Um, and it's just a, a remarkable, remarkable resource yeah, and, and continues to be. Yeah, yeah. Continues yeah. to be. 
Well, our next quick tip, shall we go to that? Yeah. Our next quick tip is making friends. Oh, making friends. <laughs> So, uh, and this is really important because um, you needn't feel as though you are in this alone, uh, that you're the only person who's ever been interested in rainbow history in New Zealand. In fact, there are a number of uh, historians who are working today in this area in New Zealand, and um, we'd re recommend that you maybe try and get to know them. Um, there are already connections that they have made with lots of communities um, and uh, it's worth following their lead if you can or um, approaching them online uh, in, a, in a nice way and um, seeking advice about things. Um, so, yeah. so people like uh, Elizabeth Kirikiri who has done a huge amount of research into Takatapui identities, uh, people like Will Hanson uh, who is uh, an amazing uh, researcher and also promoter of history. I mean, I think um, mm. so, some of Will's uh, uh, biggest assets uh, is just uh, a huge enthusiasm and the ability to communicate history to a whole variety of audiences, uh, which is really fantastic. Uh, people like Julie Glamuzina, uh, Will B. Ings, and probably uh, a, a really big name in history, queer history in New Zealand, is uh, Chris Brickell. Mm. And Chris Brickle's got a number of websites. And uh, the first one is, uh, well, actually, these are both on his uh, his main website. But actually, if you click on the online presentations, and this uh, gives you an introduction to some of Chris's work, which is online. So um, unpublished post-war gay writing, ordinary lives and gay history. All of these you can uh, read about and see online. But the other significant thing is that Chris has published a number of different, or well, qu quite a few books on queer history. For instance, Chris Brickle's Mates and Lovers. And this is an extraordinary piece of work uh, because it has so many names and dates and events uh, that are real launching pads that you can then go and do your own research on. So Chris has really done the kind of groundwork and open the door, which is yeah. really mm. fantastic. Mm. And this brings us to another um, key tip, which is offline only. Look, just because you can't find it online doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So um, persevere is the main point of advice there. But also, uh, there's some pretty good reasons why things haven't been digitized and why, why they're not available online. And that includes things like copyright, um, it includes privacy regulations, uh, some things have been embargoed uh, for a certain number of years after someone has died, things maybe haven't yet been deposited in archives, um, and also individual privacy. And there's also a big sort of the digital black hole. So a lot of things from, say, between 19, mid-80s mid through to the mid-2000s, Things haven't been digitized. It was the very end of when records were kept sort of in paper form uh, and those things maybe haven't been digitized yet. And they're probably maybe amongst the last things to be digitized. Um, uh, organizations often get funding to digitize historical records. And by that, it might be things 50 or 100 years ago. Catching up to the mid 80s through to the early 2000s is going to take a few more years, I'm afraid. Mm. Well, uh, leaping forward, we're looking now at uh, some of the kind of um, pages that have a lot of links to uh, on them. And uh, one of them, oh, it's uh, Pride NZ again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but this is a, a research page, and um, this allows you to jump to various online uh, repositories. And just built up over time, um, you know, has uh, a lot of interesting links as a starting point. Um, great starting starting off point. Uh, another uh, page that we really want to mention is Will Hansen's Research Guide. Mm. And I'll click on that. So um, Will spent some time at the National Library and developed this really uh, comprehensive research guide for queer studies. Not only does it have the links, but it also has descriptions around, you know, like, like why queer history the terminology used, searching on old terminology that was used, which is really important, which mm -hmm. we'll come to um, shortly. A whole range of different uh, bits of information, a lot of a lot of things going on there, and then just really wonderful links, lots of um, lots of links, lots of guides, 
and that's available on the National Library website. And big kudos to the National Library because they have really developed their kind of um, queer holdings. Uh, in fact, actually, they're taking the Pride NZ material. Um, but not only are they taking material, but they're also um, putting these things online, mm. like um, Will's uh, research guide. Another really fantastic guide is Tony Millett's Bibliography on Homosexuality in New Zealand. This is available uh, not only at the National Library, but also as a PDF online. And so Tony has done this amazing amount of work. He has identified um, references, to homose references to homosexuality between 1770 and 2012. I think a later version uh, that goes a bit later is actually at the National Library but online, um, so it's broken down into um, subjects. And then you can skip through and you can see exact references to uh, where things have been referenced. It's just a, a, a stunning it's piece amazing. of work, mm -hmm. stunning piece of work and available freely. Um, again, just reiterating that all we, everything we're talking about tonight uh, is, is freely available on the, on the internet. So we're moving into another space now. Let me change the screen. Yeah, so we've moved from personal connections to our community. And what do we mean by community? Well, we're looking at uh, rainbow resources that the communities themselves, our community, the rainbow community, uh, has developed for ourselves. So it's put together for us, by us. And there are quite a number of resources here. Um, so we'll jump to, for instance, uh, this is a Wellington-based website, Tapatoru, mm -hmm. and um, this is like one of the only websites we've come across that actually really um, acknowledges and uplifts uh, Wellington trans communities. It's amazing. And amazing there are people website. like, for instance, if you click on um, Dana's photo here, we get this wonderful photo of Dana Demilo. Uh, if we click through, we get to uh, Shelley Tariki Howard. Um, and then you can actually click on the link and it actually gives you a lovely bio of, of Shelley. This is invaluable when you're when you're really looking at kind of Welling, Wellington specific um, communities. And uh, this website's been going for at least, I think about 12 years. Mm. You can find it on the Wayback Machine. It's still available as a website itself. And they also did a, um, a physical publication about 10 years ago, they were doing it every month. Um, and that's just so full of rich, rich information. Another one, of course, is the Lesbian and Gay Archives. Oh, sorry, no, we'll, we'll come to the Lesbian and Gay Archives of New Zealand very shortly. But um, Lesbian New Zealand. And again, this is a, a real uh, homage to, um, or thanks oh, to Ellen, Ellen yeah. um, because Ellen's been doing this for over two decades. And uh, this is great because it just gives you um, an entry point into Lesbian New Zealand, uh, what's happening, where it's happening, who's doing it. Um, yes, all those things you're looking for, names, dates, places, it's all there. Uh, and Ellen keeps it really up to date sort of what's happening now. And as we said, you can use the Wayback Machine to find out what was happening. In the past. And uh, we, we, we certainly do apologise. I mean, if there are other people contributing to this, um, my understanding is that it is Alan, um, but it could be broader. Um, but it is just an amazing, mm. amazing resource. Uh, another one is, of course, the Charlotte Museum mm. uh, based in Auckland. Um, this is uh, a, a wee bit more kind of physical objects. Um, so not, a, not as big a online presence but you can certainly see physical objects and you can click on them and you can find out about uh, those particular objects in the Charlotte Museum, which has been around again for um, a long time now. Um, and it's amazing. And based, based in Auckland. And then of course we have the Gay NZ archive. So Gay NZ was a website that ran from 2001 to 2017, and it was run by Jay Benny in Auckland. And uh, subsequently, uh, GayNZ.com has been, I think, sold on to um, some other people, and, and that's re-established. But between this time, between 2001 and 2017, they did over 18,000 articles. It was, a it was a daily kind of news magazine site. 
And so if you're looking for news items relating to rainbow communities between 2001 and well, for the first two decades of, of, of the century, um, this is the place to go. So a text version is archived on Pride NZ, um, but a full version is archived on the National Library's website and also the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive. Uh, but it's just, uh, again, remarkable that you can go and click on uh, something from 2002 and read about that. And then here, this, so this is on the Pride NZ site, uh, and then you can click on the View at Wayback so you can actually see the um, what it actually looked like in 2002. Uh, and so you see a lot more kind of context mm -hmm. in terms of advertising um, where where it's set within the, um, the the kind of site navigation that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Very very good, and um, I think Jay Benny and team were so inspirational. At the very end, when they were kind of closing down, they basically said, "Look, you can um, reproduce this content, uh, but please credit it." Um, so what an amazing gift, and um, I think. Pride NZ has certainly taken on board that idea, and a lot of Pride NZ's material mm. is also uh, freely available. Um, and it, I, I, just that whole community spirit that actually it's not about money, it's about imparting information and uh, making a place for our communities. Mm. Mm. So our next site is laggins mm -hmm. um but that brings us to one of our next points and let me show you this mm -hmm. and this is all about kind of focused searching mm. which is great and um you the expert so you can <laughs> talk about it <laughs> so I'm a very recent newcomer to uh, with, so, so one of the really neat things with google is that um it knows where you live um but also <laughs> It also allows you to do some very site-specific searches or some uh, country-specific searches. So in these two examples, we've got, uh, um, we're restricting to a country by going site colon dot co dot nz, or we're restricting to a domain, so site dot lagans dot org dot nz. So if you're looking for a, um, uh, if you've got a search term, say like HIV, you're probably going to get millions of hits. But if you want to restrict it to a particular site, uh, this is how you do it. Or a particular country. Or yeah. a particular country. Yeah. So for instance, if we click on lagans, and this is a restrictive search here, and you'll see that actually the, the search term HIV, and then I've put in site.lagans.org.nz, and the only results we're getting are from lagans. And so um, that is incredibly useful when if we didn't have that, we would be getting hundreds of thousands of hits. We should also say that Lagans is the Lesbian and Gay Archives of New Zealand, and they've got an enormous, enormous archive, uh, but uh, also a lot of stuff online too. So in order to just search within the Lagans website, this is how you do it. Yep. And so if we click on one of these links, so for the MS papers, so, the, the, so these are unpublished papers, uh, you can see that actually they've got a lot of information around about who donated what, to lagans, what's in that particular folder, um, and how to access it. So then you could take this uh, call letter, call call number, and uh, email lagans and say, "I'd like to see this folder. Thanks." So a lot of this is online. A lot of it's really easily findable. Another um, version of that restrictive search is uh, <laughs> again on Pride NZ. Um, and if, for instance, we look at Catherine Mansfield, so if we just put in Catherine Mansfield without sites.prideNZ.com would get hundreds of thousands of hits. But here, we're specifically looking at Catherine Mansfield on Pride NZ, and it's very much about her um, bisexual relationships, um, having relationships with both men and women. Um, so that site.whatever is incredibly useful. It's a great tool. Yeah. yeah. So another um, community space is Wikipedia. Hmm. And uh, the neat thing about Wikipedia, well, one of the many neat things about Wikipedia is that uh, increasingly what you see on Wikipedia has got citations for where the information came from. 
which means that you can go back to those primary sources and cross-reference and check things. And this is what we have to do all the time when we're looking at history, is to sort of triangulate, to cross-reference. Don't um, believe everything that you read, particularly from one source. Make sure you can find one or two other sources that can back up that piece of information. Um, that's just a, um, a pretty important um, bit of rigor that you can add to your searches when you're searching. Uh, and also with Wikipedia, um, it is increasingly the first port of call for people when they're researching anything. I mean, it wasn't that many years ago when uh, Wikipedia was um, uh, had to be taken with a grain of salt, but actually now it is the first port of call because it is so useful and it is so well um, the, the sources are so well cited, uh, it can give you great tips for where to start on particular people. And if you can't find a Wikipedia page on someone you're looking for, maybe you'd like to start one. Mm -hmm. So we can take that analogy, uh, rather than a grain of salt, it's, it really is the kind of first course mm -hmm. um, because of, of a dinner, because actually it is the most searched website um, in the world. Actually, mm. it's, it's the first thing that comes up on Google. Um, so this is a great way of querying the, um, the, the internet is actually by making sure that uh, significant people in New Zealand, uh, significant rainbow people in New Zealand and events are actually documented uh, within the Wikipedia. And, and you can contribute to that. That's the great thing. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It is, it is open source. So actually, if you have uh, specific information, uh, you can contribute that to Wikipedia pages. Mm. Mm. Well, our next uh, little journey is in the space between community and mainstream. And it's, it's, it's that kind of area where um, you're bridging that gap between a community resource and a kind of mainstream institution. So we're thinking about things like student magazines, uh, independent publications, and um, yeah, that, that, mm. that kind of material. But there's a there's a really important message here, which is 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 yes, <laughs> is on the next slide. Um, be prepared, be prepared, and keep an open mind, keep a broad mind when you're searching, particularly when you're looking into the past, because language and attitudes have certainly changed in the last few years, in the last few decades, in the last few hundred years. They have changed a lot over time. So. Historical attitudes to things can be confronting. Be prepared. Keep an open mind. There you go. Enough said. Yep. So uh, our first uh, link is at uh, looking at the Salient magazine. So Salient is a uh, Victoria University student magazine in Wellington, and it goes right back, I think, to the 1930s. Um, it's online via Victoria University, and this version uh, or this um, uh, volume here is. Uh, July the 6th, 1981, Gay Pride Week. So not only do you get the images, you also get the text. So this has been really well transcribed. Mm. Um, again, quite easy to um, easy to search kind of from Google, not so easy to search from the website, to be perfectly honest, um, because there is no real, I can't restrict the search to salient itself. Um, the other really interesting thing is that you can click on the image and you actually get the digitized version of that page. Mm. Uh, so this is where the idea of actually, if you know a date or a range of dates, this is a really, um, this is how you would actually search salient, I think, because um, salient wasn't produced every week. Uh, and so you'd probably want to go to um, if, um, uh, volume, uh, publications before and after mm, that date mm, to see. Mm. Um, I, th I think the other thing to be aware of is that um, news didn't travel necessarily as fast as it does today. So something that happened last month might not appear until a month or two uh, in terms of the publication mm. date. In Auckland, uh, there is the Auckland University Crackham student magazine. And uh, Again, this is a slightly hard to navigate, but a, an amazing resource. And I'll just zoom up a wee bit. So uh, Auckland University have called uh, there's the bookshelf. And so these are all the things that have been uh, digitized, not in alphabetical order, but actually if you click on Crackham, so 1927 to 1990, um, and that 
kind of comes back to what Roger's saying in terms of um, stuff, you know, in the recent past, so we're talking 20, 30 years ago, might not be available online because of copyright issues. But there might be a hard copy of it somewhere. If you can get to uh, the uh, university library, uh, they're most likely to have a hard copy of it available up until fairly recently. Mm. So we know that uh, gay liberation occurred 1971, 1972, 1973, that, kind of around that area. Uh, so you can actually click on the year and that will then bring up the different uh, publications that you can view and in this instance they're actually bringing it up as a pdf in in the window so you're you're, you're literally just seeing the scanned version um so acting a little slow there not quite sure why uh, but you can actually scroll uh, up and down and I'm not sure if you can text search, to be honest. Mm. I'm not sure if you can. So it might be one of those things where you're actually um, just literally viewing it page by page. Mm. Drilling down on the date and then you're going through page by page. And university uh, magazines are really important for gay liberation. Universities being centres of uh, gay activism, or centres of activism full stop. Um, likely as not if it was happening uh, activism-wise, uh, wise. Uh, it would be reported on in the local student magazine. Uh, and so you can find lots of material there in those. And so it's not just Auckland and Wellington, but also Christchurch and Dunedin have their equivalents too. Mm. Auckland University also has Broadsheet. And so Broadsheet was uh, New Zealand's feminist uh, magazine uh, from, I'm not quite sure the dates were just, uh, gosh, wouldn't this be funny if the internet suddenly dies on us? <laughs> And this is all a completely live internet presentation, so um, this is going to be really interesting. It's just taking a while. Talk amongst yourselves. What I might do is actually reload this page, and we'll just try that one more time just to see. It might um, might have gone a bit weird. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so 1972 to 1997, so right in the 70s where um, feminism, fe feminism was really taking off, Gay liberation was really taking off. So, for instance, you could put in uh, Nahuya. And here we are with Nahuya. So this is from 1992. But this would go right back to the 1970s. Um, so uh, it's a really uh, fantastic resource. In Wellington, there is also the independent newspaper called City Voice. And City Voice uh, was running in the 1990s. 1993 to 2001, uh, and kind of independent, kind of left-leaning, um, very much kind of uh, based in the inner city. Uh, so if you, for instance, put on transgender, uh, you will get all the different city voices that have got the word transgender in them. And then you can click on any of these, and it will take you to the particular articles, which is very useful. Mm. Yep. Also crossing that bridge between community and um, institution are all of the academic institutions because they hold and they um, make freely available a lot of the uh, theses that, that people write. Um, and we'll just uh, show you a number of them. Uh, so for instance, if you Googled Elizabeth Kirikiri part of the whanau, you would get Elizabeth's research into Takatapui and uh, for instance, if I was to click on, I think, this one here, um, it will actually give us a bit of an abstract of what the research is about. But also you can get uh, the full thesis, which is uh, amazing. Amazing. It's an amazing resource right there. Yep. Mm. Um, likewise, Alison Laurie um, has done um, a thesis on pre-1970 lesbian life in Aotearoa. And we searched Alison Laurie Camp. And note, note the that, spelling. Note yeah. the spelling. Uh, that's an early uh, spelling of camp uh, rather than C-A-M-P. Uh, so that was what was used in the uh, 70s, um, which is, this is, again, um, full of names and places and dates. And, of course, Will Hansen. Mm. So, uh, Will, if you search Will Hansen Trans Resistance, uh, we get uh, Trans Resistance in Aotearoa. And, again, this is um, available to view online with a bit of an abstract, and uh, 
and then some links to that particular um, thesis, which is really mm. fantastic. And then, Rog. And then we have. We need to look at <laughs> oral histories. It says, scrolling the screen up. Oral histories at the National Library. National Library has a huge uh, oral history resource. Uh, and uh, much of it, well, some of it is available uh, to be listened to online. Uh, you can uh, ask them and you can get a link to hear things online. Other things you need to go into the National Library to hear um, there at the National Library. Um, but um, it's really worth going, you know, taking that step and actually visiting the library itself and um, availing yourself of the incredible pretty rich uh, oral history archive they've got there from New Zealand. That's extraordinary. Mm. And then we also have uh, institutions, collecting institutions like uh, Te Papa. So mm. Te Papa have got an LGBTIQ hub and uh, this, uh, not only do they have collection items, but they also have writings about rainbow communities that have been developed over the last couple of years. And uh, this particular piece of writing is written by uh, Chris Brickle, mm. uh, who is fantastic about kind of really making um, history alive. I think that's the big thing is actually bringing history out of the history books and making it alive. Um, this is a really great example. Uh, this is speaking about Toss Williston and, and some of his uh, partners. And if we scroll right to the very bottom, this is a very interesting post because mm. it talks about Leo Bensman and former lover Lawrence Bajant. So here Chris is really being explicit about the relationship between Lawrence and Leo. And this brings us to our very next point, which is... The jigsaw. Yeah. What do we mean by that? Well, what we mean is that sites can highlight or hide different aspects of people's lives. Uh, and uh, that can be done for a variety of reasons. Um, and maybe you can make your own mind up about uh, why or why not certain things are mentioned uh, online or or not. Um, so that's why it's worth visiting multiple sites, uh, trying to come at a topic from multiple angles to try and cross-reference to make sure that you get a more complete picture of, of someone or an event or, or what have you. So uh, this is a great example. So you'll remember that uh, Chris uh, um, Brickle said that Lawrence and uh, Leo no, were lovers. Um, lovers. Um, if we go to Tiara, which is the official dictionary of New Zealand biography um, and maintained by the Ministry of Culture and Heritage, uh, and we scroll down, we can see that in fact, they were just lifelong friends. Mm. And uh, this is just a really great example of how different sites can emphasize or hide different parts of uh, people's lives. I should actually point out in fairness that this, this was written in 1998 um, and Chris's was written, um, you know, just a couple of years ago. Yeah, so, so times are changing, perspectives and attitudes are changing. But what it really highlights is the value of reading between the lines. And this is something, you know, as people from the rainbow community, we're really good at. We're really good at trying to find ourselves between the lines. And um, all I can say is persevere. Um, but it also points out, oh, sorry, I was just going to, um, it also uh, points out, um, what am I trying to say? Um, uh, also, things to note is that actually um, mainstream collecting institutions may not actually um, talk about somebody's uh, gender expression, gender identity, or sexual orientation if it's not directly related to a particular collection object. So there's a real tension there between um, communities who want to know um, that somebody is queer, but actually uh, these mainstream institutions will go, well, actually, it doesn't have any relevance to this particular artwork or this particular photograph or, or what have you. Um, and so I think that's actually where the power of the community platforms come in because they are probably a lot more open about saying, oh, this person was gay or this person was trans. Um, you'll find that actually a lot of the mainstream institutions won't uh, say that because actually they say, well, actually, it's that's not relevant. 
Um, of course, it is relevant to certain communities, mm. um, but uh, again, there's that that tension. Yeah. That tension. There. So again, it's keeping an open mind, approaching things from different angles, reading between the lines. All those things will um, really hold you in good stead when you're doing your research. Mm. One of the other websites we'd love to point out is uh, Heritage mm. New Zealand uh, Pauriri Tanga, Tonga, sorry, um, and they are actively uh, are actively 404 are page not found. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> this worked yesterday. Gosh, that's amazing, isn't it? Um, let me have a look to see if we can find the rainbow <laughs> rainbow list. Is there a search function? Oh, there is. Oh, that glass eye. Okay, same way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they saw we were searching on it yesterday and thought, oh, <laughs> take it down. Take quick, it down quick. quick jump, go. <laughs> Sorry, the um, link on our website <laughs> doesn't work. Um, but so the, the rainbow list. So Heritage New Zealand um, are actively um, highlighting uh, rainbow heritage. So the heritage and buildings that are already on the heritage list, but also they're putting new buildings onto the heritage list specifically. Um, saying that this is a, a significant site for rainbow communities. Mm. And Heritage New Zealand, of course, uh, used to be the New Zealand Historic Places Trust. So it is it is about place, it's about location, but just as importantly, it's about the people who used those places, who were in those places, who enjoyed those venues or those locations or whatever. Um, and so this is a fantastic list, which is being added to all the time. And you can, if you have sites you think are of rainbow significance mm. in your area, um, please submit them to Heritage New Zealand because um, they are adding to this list all the time. And it's, um, again, it's another uh, amazing resource for researchers. Mm. Well, bringing a lot of these collections together is a aggregating site called Digital NZ. And so this is a link, uh, we've just searched Catherine Mansfield, but you can see here that we've actually got both the Pride NZ material and Radio New Zealand material sitting side by side. So the aggregator in Digital NZ is a fantastic way of leveling the playing field so a community archive and a national broadcaster can sit side mm. by side, which is really fantastic. So Digital NZ have over 30 million uh, records um, from mm. uh, like about 300 different institutions, both community, public and private institutions in New Zealand. And so um, this is a really fantastic resource. The reason why this uh, Pride NZ entry is here is because of the free data sets. And the free data sets on Pride NZ allow anyone to download, for instance, we've got locations data so you can have a, um, a, an Excel file of different locations relating to rainbow places, um, including the heritage list. Um, but also you've got the entire media database uh, that is behind Pride NZ that you can download. And that's what Digital NZ use as well. And these files were really inspired, I think, by um, people like Jay Benny, Gay NZ, um, making things freely available and saying, um, as long as you credit it, don't do it commercially, but but you know, like um, help the community and and make the history alive. Mm. Moving on to our next little section, which is dun, 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 the mainstream. There we go. So um, the mainstream, uh, as we know, is often the the uh, from the perspective of the majority, and it might not necessarily reflect rainbow communities in the best light, or even at all, even acknowledge that they exist or acknowledge those connections. However, as I keep saying, keep an open mind. It's amazing what you can find if you're prepared to read between the lines, uh, or uh, maybe in the case of um, what we're about to look at, papers past. Um, thinking of the words that you're that you're searching on, the terminology that you're searching on. Uh, again, yeah, as I say, don't take things at face value, um, and try and find multiple sources for your information. Just to, as I say, triangulate and zero in um, on the information. So an, an amazing website is Papers Past, and that has papers going right back to the 1860s, maybe a bit earlier from throughout New Zealand, and you can search across all the papers or narrow it down to one particular region. 
In this instance, we're looking at Amy Bock, and you can see that we've got um, a couple of examples of Amy uh, coming up here. This is 1909, and it goes on. And then we get to kind of terminology wording like Amy Bock, the masquerader. And this is a term that you will find quite frequently uh, looking back 100 plus years ago, uh, used to describe uh, people who might cross-dress, uh, referred to in the papers not as cross-dressers or anything else, but as masqueraders. Uh, and, uh, of course, that was an offence until the mid-1960s. Uh, and so it's an example of um, thinking about the words that you search on. For instance, if you type in gay <laughs> and are looking at something on papers passed from, you know, further back than, say, 50 years ago, um, you won't find necessarily any reference to any rainbow community activity or anything, but if you look for words like, uh, unfortunately, words like pervert or um, indecent, indecent mm. uh, those sorts of words uh, might help you uncover uh, stories about rainbow community members or activities. Mm. Um, yeah, it's worth just having a fairly broad lexicon of words that you search on um, when trying to find information, because um, times change, words change to describe things. Um, and it doesn't mean that they're not there, but you might just need to think of it laterally about how you're searching. Also, bear in mind that, for instance, if you search on a uh, indecent assault, uh, not only will it bring up um, uh, items that would have been considered consensual nowadays between two men, um, but it will also bring up stuff that is not consensual nowadays and is still illegal. So... Mm. Um, looking on indecent assault, you also then have to kind of delve into it and um, kind of uncover whether it's still a crime or whether it was uh, just a um, consensual homosexual mm -hmm. experience. Another way of looking at Pride, in, uh, um, Pride NZ, another way of looking at um, passport uh, papers passed is there's a text-based version of it. Um, and this allows you to probably skip through a lot more files, a lot more records very quickly. Um, and so you just put in the, the name Amy Bock, and then it gives you a bit of a paragraph, highlights the text, and then you can view the full articles, but you can see that it's a lot faster in terms of just mm. going through uh, the things highlighted in the kind of a yellow color are adverts, um, but it just makes it a bit easier to kind of navigate um, if, you're, if you're looking through thousands of records. Yeah, a bit like Google. Um, to be done what you're searching, uh, it can come up with hundreds, if not thousands, of entries. So that just makes it a bit faster to so browse through. Another website is Natalna Sound and Vision, mm -hmm. and they um, uh, manage the public collections of TVNZ and Radio New Zealand, so their historic collections. And this is invaluable. So, for instance, everything prior to oh, probably the 2000s, I would say. So, like, for instance, here's um, uh, Fran Wilde doing homosexual law reform. And you can actually watch that online, uh, which is really fantastic. So not only can you watch some of these clips online, but you can also put in a request to Natanga and and see that, info, see that either the, the, the um, visuals or... Uh, look at or listen to the audio. Uh, another um, amazing archive is the New Zealand Cartoon and Comics Archive. And this is at the National Library. And we've searched Sam Orchard, uh, very, very talented cartoonist, uh, comic uh, creator. And so these are some of the... Um, some of the strips that are actually in the archive, which is really amazing. Mm. And this cartoon and comics archive goes right back as well. So it, it holds some really um, quite uh, um, unpleasant material in terms of kind of um, bigoted views. Uh, but then um, it has some also really uplifting uh, materials such as uh, oh, Sam. Sam's mm. here. Yeah. So we're going to move on to our next area which is so this is state and official records and official archives 
uh, and uh, there are some reasons why you might want to look at those and they contain uh, often some very useful information for us as researchers and historians. Mm. A really key thing with state and official archives are the following points, which are you really need to question why the information was captured by the state. And so when we say state, we're talking about police files, we're talking about health files, investigations, identity documents. What was the information? Why has it been recorded? And for what purpose? And who was the intended audience? So uh, a classic example would be, say, a police investigation file that is solely there as a form to aid a prosecution of somebody in a, in a criminal case. And so they are coming at that from a very particular angle and is, won't be the full story. They want a prosecution, um, you know, and you think uh, uh, other things like um, health files, um, they are there for a particular case. And when you, when you hear stories like from a year ago when um, the abuse and and care inquiry was happening where they were talking about um, kind of systematic abuse of rainbow people in psychiatric hospitals with um, ECT treatment simply because they were um, homosexual. Um, so there's, there's, you, you need to know, you need to think about the motivation for these records. The next one is accuracy. So there may be inaccuracies in the official record. These may be human error, but also they may be intentional uh, when you think that uh, homosexuality was considered a mental disorder until about 1974. It was illegal in terms of the activity, homosexual activity, until 1986. Uh, why would you tell an official that you were gay? Mm. I mean, why? Yeah, and worth bearing in mind given the census that we've just uh, all filled in. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And another point is... Silence. Mm. So the absence of information can be just as informative. It can speak volumes, in fact. Um, if something isn't there, why isn't it there? Um, why was it not of interest to whoever was collecting the information at the time? I don't know why that's gone off. No, and I'll just change that back. Mm. So some of the um, things that we're actually uh, looking at are things like uh, we can get uh, and see um, Carmen Rupe's passport file. So this is actually from Archives New Zealand. And we'll just click on that. And uh, we've searched Carmen Rupe, accept all. And we can see here that we can click on Carmen's file and we can click on it. And it will bring up a document that we can actually look through quite uh, quite. A lot of in a lot of detail so uh, we get the uh, letters quite an amazing amount of detail and you'll notice on the first page we have it's defined as sex cases and so um, this also highlights some of the um, things that were happening in the in, in, in the kind of um, bureaucracy of the of the institutions of the collecting institutions Another example is looking at wills and probates. And here we have Robert Gant, who was a photographer here in Wellington, uh, died in 1936. And so as a, um, uh, if, if you have a certain amount of money at the, uh, when, when you die, it goes to probate. So they decide, you know, where the money's going. Um, and this is really a fascinating document because it shows us uh, in Robert's own hand, um, I think, uh, what, or maybe, Maybe it was written and he signed it. Um, what he possessed and who he gave it to, mm. uh, what were his important kind of uh, heirlooms that he was wanting to pass on, and here's Robert's signature. So uh, an incredible amount of detail mm. that's freely available. Uh, we should note that um, there is a, a, a time restriction, isn't there? So these files are accessible because it's like, you know, 50 years plus after the death. Mm, that's right. Um, and there's a sliding scale uh, for things like uh, birth, death, marriages uh, in New Zealand. Uh, like you can search on people's dates of birth uh, if they were born more than 80 years ago or 100 years ago, I think it is, or if they 
uh, died, you know, more than 100 years ago. So it's not going to help you necessarily for the most recent of people, but um, for uh, more historic individuals, uh, it can be a lot of use, really mm. helpful. Archives New Zealand holds also holds coroner's files. So uh, you would be referred to the coroner if coroner, coroner if, um, for instance, it was an unexplained death, uh, if it was a suicide, if it was a, a manslaughter or a murder or a crime. Um, and this is where uh, the coroner comes in and investigates the death. And so, for instance, Miles Radcliffe, who was murdered in 1946 here in Wellington, um, you can actually go into that file and see extensive uh, details about his death, how he died, uh, what his body, injuries on his body. So we won't obviously show you that now. That is available. And um, just just care when you're, when you're looking at this kind of mm. material because actually it's pretty confronting. Um, and remembering that these are all people as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, but for a researcher, if you're doing kind of research into a particular case, um, it's it's uh, in, completely invaluable. And then, of course, we have uh, Helma von Danneville, who was imprisoned on Matusum's Island in 1917, I think, during World War I. Uh, you'll see that on this page we have, sorry, no results were found. And this is a real example of um, sometimes search engines aren't particularly sympathetic to uh, your, your queries. We know there's a record there, um, but it doesn't come up with Helma von Dunneville. If we take out the first name, we get we Dr. Von Dunneville. And this is a um, an investigation file because Helma was thought to be a German spy. Uh, and Helmer was not German or, or a spy, spy. <laughs> um, but was persecuted and put onto Matu Soames Island. And this is a full interview transcript with Helmer and the investigation file, which is really fascinating. And uh, that is also on Archives New Zealand. So going from kind of those national collections, uh, there are also the local collections. So like at Wellington City Council, yeah. uh, they have a whole variety of uh, records. Yeah, really useful things like property records, who owned what, uh, where and when, again, per permits and things and consents for constructing various things. Cemetery records are really valuable. There's an amazing amount of information you can find on somebody's tombstone, perhaps, if it's there. Uh, also, great uh, image archive as well of mm. uh, early images of Wellington or I mean, of, of any local area. Mm. And we've actually skipped a step. I, 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 I'm sorry to say we've um, we were going to go from those national archives down to things like uh, Hansard and parliamentary mm. reports, which we'll just go to, and then we're going mm. to go to local councils. But we can do uh, a bit of a, a reverse on that. Um, we were going to say that actually on the Papers Past website, uh, there are things like the Police Gazette. So, for instance, we've searched here Charles Mackey, uh, who was the former mayor of Wanganui, mm -hmm. and uh, this is his police mugshot. And so the Police Gazettes have a whole range of um, kind of mugshots and, um, yeah, a whole lot of stuff about crime. And you'll find that actually a lot of particularly in the early years of, of kind of rainbow communities and, and the state, a lot of it's very much intertwined with criminal, criminal activity, mm. uh, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, unfortunate, but also useful because we can find it. Because there's a record. Yeah. 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 So parliamentary papers. Um, so these are the things that are submitted to parliament. So, for instance, we've searched sodomy here, and then we can see right back to 1889 the number of uh, people that were arrested or charged with sodomy and prostitution. So there's a whole range of, of material there. And of course, Hansard. So Hansard is the written uh, description, the transcript of the official record of parliament. And historical Hansard from parliament goes right back to 1854 and is absolutely amazing. So 
if we click on one of those links. So if we do Hansard for the 8th of March, uh, we will get uh, Fran Wilde's introduction of homosexual law reform into Parliament. The one thing you don't get with Hansard is you don't get the um, uh, necessarily the uh, interjections that weren't recorded mm. um, or the um, the kind of uh, flavour in terms of how how kind of bigoted it became. Um, but it's uh, it's it's very it's, it's a great great resource. Mm. We're just looking at the time and uh, we're going to turn into pumpkins very soon. So we might just skip forward mm. a wee bit and uh, we've talked about local councils. So we might just go to our last uh, area, which is... So looking for international sites that might have uh, material which is related to uh, New Zealand rainbow history. And it's surprising what you might find. One of the... Um, similar sites to papers passed in New Zealand is called Trove in Australia. And because there was such a um, back and forth between New Zealand and Australia, um, a lot of New Zealand stories also traversed the Tasman and made it to Australia. Here, for instance, is a um, uh, talking about Merton Hodge, who was a medical person in New Zealand, but also was um, a very famous uh, writer of plays. Uh, he was on the West End in the UK for three years, solid, uh, was on Broadway, um, but actually then came back to Dunedin. Um, and so this describes his his uh, success in the UK. Amazing. Yeah. And an Australian newspaper. Yep. And then we have the Welcome Collection in the United Kingdom. So this is an archive. Well, I'm not entirely sure what it is an archive of entirely. Is it medical? It's more medical. Yes, yeah, more medical and, and, and. related sort of archival things. It's from the um, uh, Welcome uh, Medical Medication Industry family. Um, but they've archived, uh, of, of all things, uh, a collection of uh, New Zealand AIDS Foundation posters. Uh, and so you can see them there uh, online. Um, and it's amazing to see New Zealand posters in this international online archive. And I guess the, the key point here is that um, New Zealand information is not necessarily contained to just New Zealand, that actually go exploring in external archives overseas because um, invariably there will be, be material there, mm. uh, including our last example here, which is the Bay Area Reporter, which is a community newspaper in San Francisco. And we can see here um, back in 1980s, mid-1980s, um, they were talking about how the uh, US politics was influencing the homosexual law reform debate in New Zealand. And so this really gives you a, a really uh, international feel for what was going on and how, mm -hmm. the, how the US saw what was going on in, the US, in, in New Zealand. What's quite funny is, of course, the um, Tony Katowicz quote. Uh, so Tony Katowicz was a publisher for Out magazine and many other things. Uh, so he supplied the quote. It's gone to the um, San Francisco and is now coming back to New Zealand. So it's mm. uh, quite a nice round trip, mm. as, as we would say. Um, but yeah, I, I guess the key thing is to just um, check international archives as well. So just kind of uh, rounding up our, our discussion now, because we've been going, oh, we've been, it feels like a lifetime, doesn't it? It feels like a lifetime. But no, um, there, there are just a number of points we really want to, to make. Um, first of all, perspective. Perspective, yeah. So uh, why start from the point of view that everyone is heterosexual when we know that not everyone is? Why not flip that? And why not uh, look at it from the other point of view, that maybe everyone is not heterosexual, and start from there and see where that gets you? It's a, it's a very interesting way of thinking and way, way of looking at the world. Uh, the next point is the past is all things good, bad and indifferent. So it's really important to take care of yourself uh, when you're looking at the past and remember that the past is not the present, that the uh, views and ideas expressed in the past are in the past and they don't necessarily um, relate to today, although sadly some do, mm. um, but actually you just need to Keep healthy. Mm. Yep. Respecting the past. So when you talk about people in the past, keep in mind 
how you would want to be talked about by others 100 years from now. Oh, it's really worth keeping in mind. And the last point is talking about or thinking about remembering yourself. Um, how do you want to be remembered? Who's going to tell your story and what sources will they use? So now is the best time to be depositing material with archives. Uh, don't wait for somebody to ask. I think it's important just to um, contact archives or institutions and say, um, I'd like to donate material. Mm -hmm. And if one institution doesn't want it, there'll be other institutions that do want it. So um, think about how you want to be remembered. Yeah, um, think about it now. Yeah. And and be, be proactive about it, because actually, particularly these mainstream institutions that get public funding, they have a responsibility to archive all aspects of New Zealand culture um, in a whole variety of different ways. Mm -hmm. And so um, your story is just as valid as mm. anyone else's story. And, um, you know, think about what somebody will hear in 100 years' time, and it should be your side of, of, mm. of, of the story. Of the story. Mm. Yeah. Just finally, uh, again, we want to come back to our opening um, because uh, Georgina was such a huge part of the rainbow communities here in New Zealand and internationally, and uh, really want to pay tribute to Georgina and uh, send our love to uh, Georgina's friends and whanau um, and uh, know that she will inspire us, she has inspired us and will continue yeah. to inspire us in the future. So thanks very much Thank for very much. watching. Really appreciate that. Thanks for the comments, Will. Um, mm -hmm. It's fantastic to know that um, the comments are, are working and uh, that you were here. It was really lovely to um, hear from you um, and to everyone else that's watching now and in the future. Um, so we'll say goodnight and leave you with Georgina. Ka kite alo. Ka kite. <laughs>